chapter 6, section 5, question 1. It's a no calculator problem. And for working together, I have a formula of together over happy person 1 plus together over happy person 2 equals one job done. The way I got that is let's say that happy person number 1 can do the job in 3 hours. And happy person number 2 can do the job in 2 hours. If happy person number one works for one hour, they'll get one third of the job done. If happy person two works for one hour, they'll get one half of the job done. And together, they will get five sixths of the job done. But we don't want you to get only five-sixths of the job done. We want to get the entire job done. So we want to know how many hours does happy person one have to work, and how many hours does happy person two have to work to equal the entire one job done. Now that job changes. In this case, the job is doing five problems. So we don't need this five problems because all three of them are exactly the same. So we want to know the together time, which is our variable, so I don't know what our together time is, but happy person one can do the job in six minutes, happy person two can do the job in four minutes, and it equals one job done. I'm gonna put a little kind of squiggly box around that. These two are, remember, two of the four things that we need to solve our equation. If you made these so that I don't, I can see them and they're not messed with, I can give you half credit right there. Now, we need, of course, to make our common denominators, Make sure you make it on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And our common denominator is, of course, 12, which is our lowest common denominator, and I almost, almost made it 24. 12 will never equal 0, so we don't actually have to worry about it here, but we do have our laser beams, and we get 2x plus 3x equals 12 which is 5x equals 12, divide both sides by 5. Make sure to actually solve for x on the right-hand side. And also write 12 over 5 and label it with minutes. There's a shortcut to solving this, but it doesn't include the work, but it's a way of checking your answer. You could actually take these and multiply them and add them and reduce. That would be a quick way of double checking your answer. Chapter six, section five, question two. This is a calculator problem because we're gonna get some yuckier numbers in here. Notice I left this formula up from chapter uh, six, section five, question one, but you're gonna have to have that memorized. So student A, who is person one, can erase four boards. Ah, boards has nothing to do with time. Four boards here, four boards here, and four boards here. All of that is bogus information. As long as they match, you can cross them out. At this level of math, they will always match. So our together time, together student A and B can erase four boards in 15 seconds. That is our together time. And remember, the together time goes on both of the numerators. Person one is 25 seconds. And the question is, how long would it take student B, which is person two? And we're gonna add them together to equal one. Squiggly box, that is half credit right there. Now, 15 over 25 and 15 over x equals one. Leaving spaces here because I'm gonna make my common denominator, which is apparently going to be 25x. We don't want x equals 0, so that would be bad. So if x was equal to 0, x could not equal 0 because we'd be dividing by 0. And also, if student b could do it in 0 seconds, that would be amazing. Equal sign, common denominators, pew pew, 15x. 
And 15 times 25, I don't know about you, but I am going to use the calculator because this is a calculator okay question. 15 times 25 is 375 equals 25x. I want my x's on the same side. Subtracting 15x, I'd really like for my x's to be positive. Dividing by 10 is very nice. It just moves the decimal over one place. You could have 37.5, or if you wanted it as a fraction, you could have 75 over 2, and I would accept that as well. But 37.5, when you're talking about time, makes a little bit more sense. So 37.5 seconds. For parts, define your variable, write the equation, solve it for all the variables, and then write your answer and label it. Chapter 6, Section 5, Question 3, Type 1 of 2. These have to do with numbers. The fun thing about that is it means you won't have to label because they're numbers. What number multiplied to the numerator and added to the denominator of 2 thirds makes the resulting fraction 4 fifths? We're going to start off with 2 thirds. And it says, what number multiplied to the numerator and added to the denominator makes the resulting fraction 4 fifths? Squiggly box. There's half credit right there. Now we need to solve it. 2 times x is 2x, and I'm going to write this in descending order by degree, leaving a space to make my common denominator so that I can multiply this by 5. I could also multiply the 5 in the front, and x plus 3. Extending the column. Our common denominator is, of course, 5 and x plus 3, we do not want it to equal 0, that would be bad. So, 5 can equal 0. If x was equal to negative 3, that would be bad. Equal sign, common denominators, pew pew. Multiplying, we get 10x. Apparently I was not multiplying yet. All right, now multiplying, we have 10x equals 4x plus 12, getting our x's onto one side. The teachers who like the x's on the left-hand side, very happy. We get 6x equals 12, divide both sides by 6, and we get that x equals 2. Hey, 2 is not negative 3. 2 is wonderful. Let's try it. 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 plus 2 is 5. It works. Make sure you write the answer here as well. The four parts, define your variable, write the equation, solve it for x, check it, and then write the answer. Chapter 6, Section 5, Question 3, Type 2 of 2. This is actually one of the harder problems in this section. The reason is, it has a lot of vocabulary here. The sum, sum meaning that, of the reciprocals, meaning we're flipping it over, of two consecutive odd numbers. Some students do not know about consecutive numbers. Just the word consecutive would be numbers like one and two and three, numbers that come after each other. In which case, if we made this into variables, that would be x, x plus one, and x plus two. But we have consecutive odd numbers. Consecutive odd numbers would be like one, three, and five, which would be x and x plus two, and x plus 4. Many students are uncomfortable with this because they think odd numbers, this should be an x plus 1 and an x plus 3. But they're spaced apart by adding 2 to get to the next odd number. The same variables would apply if it was consecutive even numbers, which would be 2, 4, and 6. They are also two spaces apart. And you would get x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. Since we're using consecutive odd numbers, our variables are going to be x and x plus 2. Now we have to do the sum of the reciprocals of these odd numbers. So the reciprocal of x is 1 over x. The reciprocal of x plus 2 is 1 over x plus 2. 
And the sum of the reciprocals means we're going to add it together to equal 12 over 35. Squiggly box because we want to make sure we know the answers. And we have part one to find your variable, part two write the equation. Some students already know what the answer is because 35 breaks up nicely into 5 times 7. And 5 plus 7 will give you the 12. We actually already know the answer is 5 and 7. But we need to show the work. So showing the work is, of course, important. We are going to get the common denominator. Leaving spaces here, so I have space to put my common denominator. And in bummer news, this has an x. It has an x plus 2, and it also has a 35, which many students will forget. So this one, I need an x plus 2, top and bottom. And I need the 35. This is the step that a lot of students are going to forget, because we very rarely ever had three different denominators, except in that ABC problem. Here, I need a 35 and an x. I'm going to put it in the front. I can fit it. 35x and 35x and x and x plus 2. x and x plus 2. Equal signs, common denominators. Pew, pew. 35 times 1 by the multiplicative identity, we will have 35x plus 2. Multiplicative identity, we have 35x. And here, I'm going to actually multiply the 12 and the x to get 12x. And that will make it easier for my distributive property. I'm going to combine my terms and get 70x plus 70. Some people might want to factor that out, but that's not going to help us. We need to get it all on one side equal to 0. If you have a teacher who wants everything on the, all the x's on the left hand side, now would probably be the time to change that around. From here, we have a calculator. Huzzah! I can take out 2. I can also divide both sides by 2 because of the equal sign, and we'll actually get rid of the 2 entirely. But we've been learning factoring, so we're going to factor out the 2. Six times negative 35 will give us negative 210 and negative 23. Y equals negative 210 divided by X. Second table, scrolling around to see if we can find the pair, which is negative 30 and 7. This is going on top, reducing, can't reduce, reading down. or teachers who do not need you to show all this work of solving, but what I have been seeing is that the college professors want to see this. Now, over here, if it equals zero, that's bad. X cannot equal zero, and X plus two cannot equal zero. So X cannot equal negative two. Neither of those is negative two. But, 
these are not going to be integers, so we need x to be 5. And then we need to also solve for x plus 2. Since we have defined two variables, we have to solve for 2. And that's how we'll get 5 and 7. That is a lot of work, but that's what it takes to get full credit. Chapter 6, Section 5, Question 4, Type 1 of 2. You're going to see this again in Chapter 8, so let's get it right the first time. Student A travels 20 miles in the same side time as student B travels 30 miles. Student B travels 5 miles per hour faster than student A. Back in Chapter 2 and Chapter 4, we made distance equals rate times time charts, and this is an appropriate place to use them again. Distance equals rate times time, and we have student A and student B. Student A travels 20 miles, that is a distance. Student B travels 30 miles, that is a distance. And student B travels 5 miles an hour faster than A, so x plus 5. And x. And x plus 5. And x. Now, we need to find the time. So if we think back to chapter 2, if we were to take our distance equals rate times time formula, and solve it for time, we would divide both sides by the rate, and we would find that time is equal to distance divided by rate. If you use the triangle method, you would get distance is equal to rate times time. So as we are solving for time, you would find distance over rate. If you were finding distance, you would find rate times time, and if you were finding rate, you would find distance divided by time. Since we're finding time, we want distance on top, rate on the bottom, distance on top, right on the bottom. This way we get our rational expressions, meaning they look like fractions. Now, in the same time as, this is a very important phrase. In the same time as says that this time is the same as that. Another word for the same is equal. So we're going to make those two equal to each other. Again, I want to keep this separate because the variables, notice that there are two variables this time, and the equation, that right there is half credit, and you want that. Now, you could, because there is a single fraction equal to a single fraction, you could use cross multiplication. But, because we're trying to find one way that will work for everything, I am going to use the making common denominators and getting rid of the denominator. So this needs an x plus 5 in the numerator of the denominator, and this needs the x. Notice I did monomial first, binomial second. I did the coefficient first and the variable second. This will give us our common denominator. Remember that if this ever equals 0, that is bad. So if x equals 0, that's bad. And if x plus 5 equals 0, that is bad, which means that x should not equal negative 5. We have an equal sign in common denominators. Pew, pew, they're gone. We're going to take what is left. We're going to distribute. We're going to get the x's on both sides. That way we have the numbers on one side and the x terms on the other side. If you have a teacher who wants the x's on the left-hand side, now would be a great time to switch that around. Dividing both sides by 10, and you will find that x equals 10. Some students actually want to take that and move it around because they do like having the x on the left-hand side. We have two variables. Since we have two variables from chapter 2, chapter 4, chapter 5, and this is chapter 6, we also have to find x plus 5 equals, which will be 15. This is our handy dandy answer block, which is wonderful. And then we have to write the answer over here and label it. So we have 10 and 15 miles per hour because these are rates. Chapter 6, section 5, question 4, type 202. Once again, we're doing distance equals rate right times time. So again, from chapter 2, chapter 4, and here again in chapter 6, 
we want to have our handy dandy distance equals rate times time chart. And we have a family started on a car trip by driving 60 miles in traffic. 60 is a distance, and I'm going to put a T here for traffic. When the traffic broke up, they were able to drive 40 miles an hour faster for the next 240 miles. So over here is the 240 miles when they were able to go faster, and they were able to drive 40 miles an hour faster. So we have x and x plus 40. x and x plus 40 will be our traffic rate and our faster rate. Then, if you remember from chapter 2, distance equals rate times time, we're going to divide both of these by rate, and we will still get that time is equal to distance divided by rate. So the distance will go on the top, the rate will go on the bottom. This is what's going to get us our fractions for the rational equations that we're going to be doing. This looks like an almost exact setup, the same as last question. But this time, if you continue reading, it says the total trip took seven hours. If we think about the word total, we want to find the total time, which means this time here plus this time here has a total, meaning that they add together to equal seven hours. Some good ideas is, as we're continuing on, we want our variables and our equation. That right there is half of our credit. We want to keep those separate to make sure that we get as much credit as possible in case somewhere along the line you have a mistake. Notice that I am leaving space here. I'm also going to put the 7 over 1 just to make sure that it stays in the numerator. Now, I have an x and an x plus 40. That is my lowest common denominator. I'm going to multiply this one top and bottom by x plus 40. and extend the vinculum out. This one, I'm going to put the monomy on the front and then the variable behind the coefficient. And this one needs both an x and an x plus 40. Notice that I'm not putting parentheses on the x in the numerator. And this actually lets us use 7x when we're going to be distributing. Now that we have a common denominator, and parentheses, and an equal sign, we can pew, pew, get rid of all those. This is what we have left. And notice I made that into a 7x. That way I have a distributive property from back in chapter 1. And I'm going to distribute here. Right here, this is one of the most common errors. 6 times 4 gives me 24, and with two zeros, I have two zeros. A lot of people will either put three zeros or one zero, and that will really mess up your problem. And we're using the distributed property here. 7 times 4 is 28, with one zero. This is another place that people make mistakes, is they don't distribute the x here. So the two most common mistakes are here, multiplying those numbers together and also distributing that x correctly. Many people will take so much time multiplying the 7 that they'll forget to multiply by the x as well. We need everything on one side equal to 0, and we would like this x squared term to be positive, so I'm moving everything to the right. Before I do that, I want to combine like terms here. I don't necessarily want to put it on my, under my x squared. I want to move it over so it lines up nicely with my x terms. I don't want to get confused as to which ones go together. And then, arrow coming up here to the second column. If you want to move the x's to the left hand side, let's do that. You do not have to in my class. It 
would be wonderful if we could factor out a 7, but we can't. 7 is a prime number. You can only divide it by 1 and 7. So this is a wonderful place to use our snowflake method. Ooh, this is a no calculator one. All right, so we're going to multiply this by 7, 28, 14, 15, 16, negative. Because this is so close to each other, we really want to find something that is really close to each other. Over here, we have the two zeros. I strongly suspect that these are going to be perhaps like in 80 miles an hour. So I'm going to try 80 because I know that 8 will work nicely with 16 and with 8. This 0 and that 0 will go away. That will be 2, 1, 0. Close, but not quite. All right, I'm going to go with, since I see 210, and I also see the 7, I'm going to try it with 70. And again, when we divide, those zeros can go away. 7 goes into 16 two times, giving me 28. It'll go in there four times. Oh dear, we're going further away. Let's go the other way. I'm going to go 100 and negative 168. Now if I were to put these together, I would get negative 68. We're actually getting a lot closer to the fact that we want negative 20. So I know that from this, I can get 120 in there. So I'm going to use 120. I'll use this room down here. Those zeros will cancel. It goes in there once. And four. All right. So I have 120, and I have negative 140. My A is going on the top, which is 7. That does not reduce. This one does, though, when I get 1, and negative 20. Remember that negative has to stay in the denominator on the bottom, and we read going down. And we are going to get that this factors as 7x plus 120, and wait, there's more, x minus 20. professors really like seeing all this wonderful adding subtracting to both sides. It helps keep you from making mistakes. Wonderful skills to have. And we get x equals negative 120 over 7. Let me tell you that no matter how fast you're going or how slow you're going, you're not going to have a negative speed. I can equal 0. And we are going to add 20 on both sides. One step algebra equation. We get x is 20. This makes no sense. So x is 20 is our answer. But wait, from chapter 2, if we have two variables, it has x and x plus 40, we have to have our two answers, x and x plus 40 is 60. Hey, there is our handy dandy answer block right there on the right hand side where it should be. And then we have to write the answer and label it. We're going to get 20 and 60. 
miles per hour. In good news, my people are not speeding, and also, bummer news, they were going only 20 miles an hour in traffic. Chapter 6, Section 5, Question 5. Calculator OK! You are going to see this problem again in Chapter 8, so let's make sure we learn this now so that we can get the points in both chapters. Again, it's a distance equals right times time problem, so we want to use our handy dandy distance equals right times time chart that we started using in Chapter 2. We have two failures in meeting in Albuquerque, New Mexico, 360 miles away. So, family one is traveling 360 miles, and family two is traveling 360 miles. One family speeds at 30 miles an hour faster than the other family, so one is x and one is x plus 30. So, hey, we have our variables already for their rates. But wait, there's more. For time, remember that distance equals rate times time. We're going to solve it for the time, just like we have been doing since chapter two. Distance on top, rate right on the bottom. Distance on top, rate right on the bottom. If you don't have to show this every time, wonderful. You're learning how to solve these problems. But I want to keep making sure that everyone knows why the distance goes on the top and the rate goes on the bottom. By speeding, they arrive two hours before the other family. Now consider this. I'm going to have a little drawing of family one and family two. So over here, family number one is traveling faster and they get to Albuquerque and they are sitting around waiting while the other family just drives there. So not only did their time have the amount of time for driving, plus they also had two hours in order to wait. So to make this equation, we're going to take their two times and set them equal to each other. But you know that the times are not equal to each other because whichever family was speeding also had to wait for the other family to catch up. So we look at the speeding family side, that's the side that gets the extra two hours of wait time. Now, some students said, hey, what if I put the two on this side? It would be a minus two. So if you took the slower family side and subtracted two, you would get the faster family side. That is correct. However, the reason we don't want to do that is distributing the negative from earlier in chapter six causes a lot of problems. So if we always add the two onto the faster family side, because their distances were the same, we can make this into a very easy equation. Hey, here's a box, because the variables and the equation are half of your credit. So make sure we have that, because if you start on this step here, and you've already made a mistake, I can't give you your half credit. A lot of students want to get a little sloppy about their work, so they don't put this on top and bottom, we want to make a common denominator, and then it becomes wrong. And we don't want that. Remember monomial before binomial, and coefficient before variable. I'm going to put this over 1 to make sure that it stays in the numerator. I can have parentheses around my x term here, but it doesn't make as much sense to have the parentheses around the x term in the numerator because of the coefficient 2. I want to make sure that I can just distribute a 2x instead. We have an equal sign. We have common denominators. Pew, pew, pew. They're all gone. And hey, we are going to distribute. We are constantly reviewing the fact that we have wonderful distributive property from back in chapter one. Now, in one of the previous problems, I combined like terms first, but I want to show you that here I have a 360x and here I have a 360x as well. That's really nice. They're going to cancel out nicely. 
Remember again that right here, multiplying those correctly is one of the most common errors. And here, making sure that when you distribute this x to the second term here, that the x comes along. We're going to get everything on one side equal to 0. We want this x squared term to be positive, so we're moving everything to the right. Yay, both of those are going to cancel out very nicely. Now, I have my x squared term, I have my x regular term, and then I'm going to put my plain old number here at the very end, because this way, when I drop them down, I will have them in descending order by degree. I'm also noticing already that these numbers are all even, which means I can factor out the 2. I can factor out the 2. I can also just divide everything by 2. It's going to be great. Coming up to my next column. Hey, if you have a teacher who wants the x's on the left-hand side, Right here would be a wonderful time to just take the equal zero from this side, move it to the other side. So I could do that here. And we're going to factor that. x squared will break up into x and x. And we're going to take a look at our negative 5, 4, 0, 0 on the top, and a positive 30 on the denominator. When my people are driving, they're not driving at 38.37854 miles per hour. My people drive at 40, 45, 50, 55, something like that, something that comes out nicely. So I'm going to take a look at that. We also happen to know that one of these families is speeding. So I'm going to try 90 and 60. And I'm going to find out that, hey, 90 minus 60 is indeed 30. Didn't even use a calculator. All right, so we have 90 and minus 60. Those will multiply to give me negative 5,400, and they will add together to give me 30. A goes on the top. Now, be careful. Some people use this 2. This is A here, but since I factored it out, the new A is only 1. So that means it becomes x plus 90, and x minus 60. 2 cannot equal 0, so it's not even an answer. Some students write that, and it's actually wrong. So only the things that have x's, because this part here could equal 0, and this part here could equal 0. Hi, it can equal 0. And we're going to solve these by subtracting to both sides of the equation, because this is algebra, and that's what we do. We do the same thing to the left and right of the equations. We get x equals negative 90 and x equals 60. And even though you could be driving backwards at 90 miles an hour, the speed is the absolute value of velocity, which we will learn about more in physics. The speed has to be positive. So that is not a valid answer. From chapter 2 and chapter 4 and chapter 5 and here in chapter 6, we have two variables, x and x plus 30. We have to solve for x and x plus 30 which will be 90. Hey, our handy dandy answer block from back in chapter 2. But don't forget to write the answers here. So variable, equation, solving, all this stuff here has to be here because darn it, it is an algebra class. So we have 60 and 90 and we do have to label it with miles per hour.